Hey. 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 B. Whoa. C. Whoa. D. Get it. D. All right. Episode motherfucking three. Three. Trio. How you feeling today, J. Monet? <laughs> it's It's been a day. It's been a day. Not a bad day. It's just a little, a little, a little tired today, but I'm here. Shake it up. How that song go? I got to shake it up. I'm all right here. It's all right. I got to shake it up. Like that. You know it ain't the same. And you keep on playing games yeah. like you know I'm going to stay. Shake it up. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, you got to shake it off. Well, you carry this baby and then I'll shake it off. Ooh. <laughs> You went there. I'm just kidding. You went there, though. I'm you went there. Kidding. I didn't deserve that. I'm just kidding. No, you weren't. You, I felt the seriousness <laughs> in your tone. Man. You meant that. It's I all can't right. shake it off, babe. That's all I'm saying. I'll take it. Welcome to Bed Talk, where we sit in the bed and we... And we talk. <laughs> what? Because you came for me. For oh, what? Oh, my gosh, babe. I did not come for you. You want me to shake off something that I can't? And it's shaking up. I feel like I'm so off the key. And it's shaking up. Nah. She go up and down on that song a lot. It's shaking up. And it's the same. You keep on playing. You gotta shake it up. Shake it up. Yeah, I'll do something like that. Oh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> what we got going on today, man? What we talking about? We taking questions today. Okay. You guys sent in questions. That you, no, you guys sending questions that you wanted us to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we both a little. What time is it? We act real old right now for what? We gotta shake it off. We put a poll never. basically on Instagram. Yes. And you guys weighed in, and so like we told y'all before, what you give us, we're gonna talk about it. Yes, we going to big talk about it. Big talk with the Browns. You said big, big talk. Big talk. No, talk bed about. talk. You see the attitude she giving me to get today. I'm just, let's just get into the questions because I ain't got time. Hey, I ain't but... do nothing to her. <laughs> wow. I, ain't do, I ain't do nothing to her. <laughs> so you got something you want to get off your chest? <laughs> I ain't even did nothing. All right, so we got some questions. That you guys asked us. Yep. And uh, we're going to answer them. You want to read the first one? Or you want me to read it? Um, I'll read the first one. Okay. Ladies first. Ladies first. So, and before you do anything else, hit that subscribe button. It helps us grow. It helps the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button. Yes. Drop a like and a comment too. Right there. Okay. It says, your take on being in a relationship and having platonic male and female friends. <laughs> you want me to answer the first? Yes. I'd love you to. Okay. I don't have a problem with you having male friends. I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is when you... Hmm. Sorry, right, so I trust you, period. I've been in a bunch of relationships where I didn't really fully trust the person I was with. And I feel like that gave like room for insecurities, for uh, questioning like which, which, what, the, what the real intentions is and all of that. But I feel like, you know, given this relationship, I would allow you to, like, I would be comfortable with you having a male friend. But I personally feel like most male Friends always have hidden agendas, usually. Now, I feel like, just being honest, if you were, like, unattractive, I probably wouldn't care. Yo. No, seriously. Like, I'm, and listen, everybody has, you know, beauties in the eye of their, of their beholder. <laughs> but then, you know, it's just it's sometimes where it'd be like, you know, you good. You can go out there. I, don't, I trust you come back. <laughs> I trust you come back unscathed. <laughs> I can trust that you come back with, with you know nobody tried to you know mull you down for your number or something you know what I mean 
I can trust a, a big baller ass nigga to pull then pull up in this Bentley on you talking about let me uh you know what I'm saying? Let me like, <laughs> come fuck fuck that nigga that you with, come with me. I can, you know, I can feel comfortable knowing that if if you weren't, you know, attractive. But this the the simple fact that you are, I feel like that gives room for men to have different intentions that aren't really genuine. And um, I feel like that's where the line gets a little blurry. You know what I'm saying? Like, just being a guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, and a lot of guys, they don't really have the best self-control, just to be honest. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, especially when it comes to different people who, who didn't get through certain stages in life, and they're still, like, trying to get fully monogamous or fully faithful and get all of that play out of them or you know what i'm saying just that 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 mentality like i still want to be outside a little bit you know what i'm saying so it's mm-hmm. just like so a lot of guys aren't aren't ready to settle down and have a family and have fucking five kids and you know what i'm saying like once you get to that point you don't really got the energy to try to be outside you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. um so that's where i met with that i feel like i would be comfortable with you having a, a male friend to a certain extent Okay. All right. <laughs> um, my take on that. Um, first of all, being with someone who's in the field that you're in, like you come across all walks of life. Like most of the people that you usually shoot are women, you know. And like I do trust you, um, but like I tell you always, I don't trust other people. So the same thought processes you have as far as. The line gets blurry because, like, we're just in a day and age of you're with somebody, I got to have you. But I'm willing to wait it out or I'm willing to put little cute stuff in there that you just like, ha, 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 laughing it off, but trying to worm my way in there. Like, that's how mm-hmm. just how I see people from one because from a woman's perspective, like I tell you all the time, I'm like, babe. I'm right there you gotta like, babe oh no it's not nothing I was like I'm telling you I'm a woman mm-hmm. <laughs> I see it all the time all the time mm-hmm. um, but no I don't mind the whole platonic friends at all um, so yeah I don't I, I've always been like that like if you have a friend just make sure that they're a friend like I don't want I don't need nobody coming to me as a woman mm-hmm. like no right. cause like I just feel like when people put you in a box Mm -hmm. as well, it also takes away networking blessings, like things that you could have in store, you know, later. It's just up to your partner to be like, hey, Mm -hmm. because like me growing up, you know, I grew up with all boys. Mm -hmm. So me having female friends for a long time was just like a. Like, I'll try, but then it get messy, drama coming. I'm just like, ah, I'd rather go to the wreck and go shoot ball. Like, that was me for a long time. Um, and that's why I feel like you're a special a special case because a lot of women aren't like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's why I felt for you the way I did because I seen that difference in you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you had a good balance of, you know, femininity, but it's like you also – aren't naive to a lot of shit that comes with men or you know what I'm saying? like you said you you got a lot of you know you grew up around all boys you got a lot of uncles you got a lot of you know what i'm saying they all and they all in your age range to where it feels like you know what i mean more like brothers and um so you just get it you know what i mean but a lot of women they are blind to the the little shit that their friends their male friends do like you know what I'm saying, or oh, that 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 hug might just that hand slide down a little far, and they just ah oh, stop it. Like no, that's a, a a red flag that they really want to fuck you for, and it's not just I want to be your friend. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, or you know, soon as something happens between that person and their you know significant other, it goes from just being their friend to oh come on, I, I'm about to come over there and and you know what I'm saying watch a movie with you because I know you probably blah blah blah. Next thing you know. Then you want you need a massage, <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what the massage go from the massage. Next thing you know, you you rubbing the butt cheeks and that. You know what I'm saying? It's like damn, that was supposed to be your friend, but really they was just waiting for you know me to fuck up or what's us to go on a break or you to be vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? And now they shooting they shot. Yeah, and then also with me too, if I ever put you in a bubble as my friend, when I say it's impossible to come out of it. 
it's impossible. Like, for example, my brother Elliot. Like, we would never, ever look at each other like that. And I've known him since I moved to Atlanta. Never. I say never. It's just like, we set that up from the beginning. Like, you my sis. Leave it at that. Like, And it's like, when I say, we don't even talk every day. We barely even talk at all. It's just like having a friend. Like, hey, man, you good? Hey, I'm checking on you and Braylon. Da, 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 da. This is that. That's the end of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, so I just feel like also giving a friend, a male or female friend, too much insight into you mm-hmm. is also giving them that, okay, y'all a little rocky. Y'all a little. And it just gives them the gaps to go and be like, yeah, you know, maybe I can do this because, you know, mm-hmm. I really like Trey. I really like Trey tattoos. I like the way Trey talk or whatever. Like, I, like people can have hidden agendas all the time, but mm-hmm. I just feel like that's up to that person to, like, nip that in the bud, like, separate the two. Like, you're mm-hmm. my friend. I'm going to mm-hmm. treat you just like all the rest of my friends. Like, you don't get special privileges, none of that extra stuff, because that's what my partner gets. Mm-hmm. Like, you're literally my friend and that's how I keep it so okay. yeah no, for sure for sure <coughs> that was a good question though oh yeah shout out to Bree for the question first question of the night shout out to Bree man shout out to Bree good question yeah what's next on the agenda alright so this one is blended families both growing up in them and adjusting to one if you're in a relationship what's your take on that I have just growing up, I found a newfound respect for blended families because in all honesty, my stepdad and my mother raised me like my biological father was not there. Um, He was just not very present in my life. So my stepdad from before I was even born, him, my mom was best friends. I came along and he was just like, you never have to ask that man for nothing. And he was a real stand-up guy. He basically raised me, like, to this day. I'm his oldest and his baby. His shout baby out to girl. Pops, man. Yeah, big shout out to Pops. Yes, sir. He's a and, good like, dude. his, you know, his side of the family, like, when I say he took me in, like, my grandma was my whole heart. God rest her soul. My granddad to this day called me on my birthday. Like, hey, ain't your birthday December 17th? Happy birthday. We're Braley, you know? And it's just like. Blended families are actually beautiful if people put that time and effort into it Um, because I turned out great and I have a great relationship with my dad. Um, I only use stepdad to show the blended part of it, but like I would never be like, that's my stepdad. That's my daddy, Mm -hmm. like for sure. Um, And it's just like they accepted me. Uh, I accepted him. He was really the only father I knew until I got older. And my mom was like, you know, huh, this is like my own biological father's side of the family didn't mm-hmm. really fool me or don't fool me. Like, it's, it's weird. Mm-hmm. So what was missing from them, I got from my stepdad. Um, <clears throat> I am the only child, of course. So it wasn't like he had a kid into it or anything like that. It was just me. So, Mm -hmm. and he got along with all my uncles just fine. Like to this day, he still come to cookouts. Mm -hmm. He still like everything. Like that's my guy. (laughs) Indeed, indeed. Sure. Um, from being in a relationship, you have to be willing to accept what comes with that person. Like for us, he had two. I had one. They were all boys, and from different walks of life. Like, you know, um, you know, the oldest being up north and them kind of separated here. So it's just like taking everything that came with you. Like, I believe blended families are a beautiful thing. You just have to put that effort into it. Like, you have to take my kids out of it. Like, no, all of them are yours. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I feel like blended families work because I can't be like, Oh, my son this, but yours mm-hmm. keep da, 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 da. Right, it's, right. It's never going to work because then your partner starts to build resentment because it's just like, do you really care mm-hmm. for my kids, you know? Right. Like, since we met each other, it's always been our. Mm-hmm. I feel like blended families are beautiful, whether you're in a relationship, growing up with it, you know. There are the other end, 
of being the family, you know, stepdad with ulterior motives or stepmom mistreating the kids. I've never experienced that, and I won't be the one to do that. Mm -hmm. So I can't really talk on that standpoint, but my blended family experiences have been beautiful, for sure. Dope. Dope. I'm happy for you. I love that for you. <laughs> Shout out to yours. Shout out to you and yours, man. <laughs> Real, real, real solid people over there in Alabama, Mississippi area. Shout out yeah. to them, man. They treated me like like family. Oh God, I can honestly say that this might be like the first relationship where the family made me feel like legit family. Yeah, man. I mess with your mom, like my mom. Like I call your mom, mom. Like you know what I'm saying. Like and she treats me as her son, and it doesn't feel like oh, this is my daughter's fiance, so I gotta be nice to him. It's like no, like. That's really my mom, like you know what I'm saying. Treat you like one of the boys. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I feel like blended families are dope. Like when people are selfless, you know what I'm saying. Like I feel like when you come into the situation, like you said, and it's like it's no yours or mine. It's just like that's our kids. Like yeah, and um, I feel like you know, shout out to my to my mom, my second mom. I don't even really call her my stepmom either. I just say my second mom, my other mom. Um, she's been in the family 10 plus years now at this point. And since she came into my life and our our life, she hasn't really ever made me feel like there was a separation of, you know, I, I am not going to blah, blah, blah. Like she, she handled business like my, like, a, like my mom, like my blood mom do. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's that's one rare and it's beautiful at the same time because some people, they're not able to take on that responsibility. Is that because some people be like, "Listen, I didn't make that child. I didn't listen. You laid down with that man. I'm not blah blah blah." And um, I feel like the simple fact that certain people can really take on that role and just be that that extended, you know what I'm saying, family member or father or mother or whatever the case may be. I feel like it's definitely needed, especially like with my situation, like. Um, my family is, is really estranged. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I feel like as the years went on for me being a kid, it went from everybody being super close and all the cousins hanging out and family reunions and sleepovers to now, like, I can't remember the last time I seen certain family members, you know what I'm saying? So it's super important that, you know, you have you know came into my life and your family is like my family and my you know my stepmom um and my you know my step grandma my grandma rose that's my grandma you know what i'm saying she she handles business like like listen that's my that's my baby he he 30 plus but that's my baby but um yeah it's super important shout out to nick for that question definitely that's big time big time so it says anxious versus avoidant attachment styles and how you balance the two. Hmm. Which one would you say I am? Mm -hmm. Am I avoidant? <sighs> Honestly, with us two, mm -hmm. we both have tendencies of both. Mm -hmm. I see your more avoidant attachment style when you're upset. Or you're deep in thought, or you just in one of those moods. That's where you're just like, uh, pulling back, or you're quiet. Don't mm -hmm. really want to talk about it. I don't want to deal with all that. Mm -hmm. And then just like I feel like anybody that's had has had past relationship dramas, mm -hmm. you're the anxious attachment because it's just like, oh, 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 I gotta, I gotta, you know, am I doing enough? You sure? Are you, right. you know, you know, right. you have the yeah, I'm moments. definitely, I'm definitely the one that. The the other one, the with the avoidance called, right? Yeah, I feel like when I when when I'm upset, I don't want to talk. Like if you catch me before I get to that point, that ultimate level of upsetness, if that's a word, <laughs> to that <laughs> ultimate level of like, yo, I'm 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 over this shit, because that's what I do. I don't get to the point where I want to yell and scream. If I'm quiet, then that's a bad thing. Yeah. If I'm still talking to you, we 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 good. If I'm Still trying to, you know, what I'm saying, communicate. We we in there. As soon as I, I get quiet, as soon as I start going ghost, he's gone. And it might be gone for a couple of days. Listen, you know what I'm saying. And I'm not just saying just with us. I'm just saying me as a person. Like mm -hmm. I feel like because I just understand my anger and my tolerance for my tolerance for 
Um, yeah, I, I just don't be wanting to get myself to the point where I get so angry that I say something that I regret. Mm-hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying? You know, just, I feel like that's a good, it's, that's the best way to deter or just, just, just get me back down to being able to talk about whatever is going on. Just, just shutting down. And that might not be the best way to go about it, but I feel like for me, that's, is super important it's a super important skill that i've learned you know what i mean because when i was younger i didn't do that like i would just let somebody get me to the point where i'm punching a hole in the wall or some shit you know what i'm saying and now like as an adult somebody that's you know what i mean able to sit back and remember or realize the shit that i've done and been through and it's like okay i gotta go about it a different way so even if that means shutting down for a little bit to you know not get to that much of an anger, you know what I mean? That to get that much, you know what I'm saying? That much, you know, rage. I feel like just shutting down is the best way to go. Yeah, definitely, definitely not pretty when you get there. And I think that's where when you get like that, that's where my anxious comes out because I'm just like, oh shit! Like, okay, like just for example, when we have our little debacles, we're being real with the people and. When I say we'll walk around this house like I'm a ghost, like you don't see me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Listen, if unbothered was a person from just looking from the outside looking at me, if unbothered was a person, like I could be sitting there like, just not that it's ever happened, but just for example, struggling with a trash bag, he'll walk by like, I don't see you. <laughs> like he, he, when he's gone, he's gone. I can't lie. And that hasn't happened in a whole year. I say twice. Yeah, I felt like we haven't really got to the point where I was like super, super angry. No. Yeah, I feel like you've been, you've been, you you know how when um the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, was getting so angry and um Black Widow just knew how to calm him down. That's that's how you, how you you remind me of that. And I think that's where the balancing comes because when you want to. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm over it. Like fuck it, and I'm just like no. We like we gotta talk about it. Like what is it? Like was it something I did? Was it something? And that's where we more so balance each other out. Um, because I think, like I said, from these two, I'm more the anxious of it. Like I'm just like oh, like he ain't here. He's not ah ah ah. And I think that also is just like a trauma response for me. Mm-hmm. Cause like just for example, before he was just like. No affection, like I could be sitting over there, whatever you chilling, whatever, and it was just like, uh. But with you <clears throat> being the complete opposite, when it's not there, I feel like I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like what? The, like when when you get in those moods, like it's like, and I feel it, y'all. I don't mm-hmm. know how to explain it, mm-hmm. but like just the other day, I said, "Pa, what's wrong?" He was like, "I just got a headache." Like it's like something just. Like, I don't, I can't explain it. It shit scared me. Like, to mm-hmm. the point where I was like, I felt something wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, which also goes back to you being my soulmate. But anyway, <laughs> getting on topic. Um, like, because, like, even when it comes to him or, like, someone that I look up to, like, anytime it's, like, to giving me criticism, I'm so sensitive to it. And it's just like you're attacking me almost. Um, like I'm, I've, I've came a long way. You cannot lie. I've come a long way. Mm-hmm. I used to take everything to heart. When I say everything, everything. And then, then that's when I feel like trauma responses come. Like, am I enough? Am I this? Am I that? Am I that? And then he had to literally like, like I said, we helped each other through this process. Like he's communicated a lot more. Than just shutting down. So that's why it's only really happened twice. Um, and I've gotten a lot better with. Was it something I done? What can I do? Da, 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 da. And it's just like listen. I'm just letting you know. Like this is something that you need to work on. Or something within yourself. That like I see that. You know you got more potential in. Or you got you know. And I feel like your partner should be that person for you. And I think that's where we balance each other out. With the two. So basically, if you're somebody who shuts down, I feel like the way to balance that out is to, if you're the opposite person and you're trying to get through to the person that's shutting down, maybe talking to them in a way that disarms them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever that may be. 
it might some for some people like also like with me like i'm i'm one of those people that like if we just like talk about something else or do something else that could help a little bit too like let's go for a walk or let's let's play the game like you know what i'm saying something that like and then sometimes people don't it, like it's sometimes people just need time you know what i mean like you sometimes you just got to give it some time and let the person have their time to sp to think and, and and get their thoughts together um for the opposite person that the anxious one i feel like reassurance would be the way to balance that out like <laughs> listen babe i get it you listen i just need some time to you know really gather my thoughts but you know at the end of the day we good we're gonna be good we're gonna get through it i just need to i need to need a moment yeah. so i feel like that's how you can balance it out i feel like that's how we've been balancing it out yeah, because before that definitely was a big thing. It was just like, babe, why you not, babe, why you blah, 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 blah. And it's just like I'm learning to like, okay, give him a second. Because like giving him that second, like to just, like to get all of that out. And then he understands that, okay, I have my second. You know, I know babe finna come, and he probably checked his phone, and it's probably, like, a couple messages said, like, hey, I know we're gonna be okay. Like, you know, you just, you know, it's all right. Whatever it is, da 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 da, -da. And it's just, like, it works out for the both of us, because he has his time to breathe, but I also able to be that person. Like, he said, the incredible hug, like, babe, it's gonna be okay. Like, whatever it is, don't I'm gonna give you Don't touch me like that. <laughs> we can turn these cameras off. Don't touch me like that, sis. What you doing? Hey, all right. I'm sorry. Go. Saying, it was your hand was warm too. She cut. All right. I'm sorry. Why? Why are you like this? Um, but just from those both is just like one was stronger than the other, and we had to learn that about each other. And then in the midst of it just takes a is it's you have to be willing to in the midst of turmoil or the storm to love each other through it. If you have a person that's quiet, that's not always a bad thing. Because you gotta look at the other side of it if they're not quiet. Throwing things or whatever case they decide to do go cheat or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like when he's quiet now before it was a big issue for me i'm like bro no like this is what i'm used to we gotta talk that's where the anxious part of it comes like we got to like you know let me know we're okay like what is it blah, blah, blah. but once we like learned each other it's more so if he's quiet sometimes it's just kind of like just sit here and i just hold his hand like we just be sitting here and he's not saying nothing but with that he also knows that i'm here regardless of the problem. Yeah, everything mm -hmm. that's going on. So that yeah. was something that we had to work on within each other and with each other. And we've gotten a lot better at it. So we balance each other out with those two. Indeed. Yeah. That's a good one. Shout out to... Tori. Shout out to Tori, man. Shout out to Tori, my girl. Appreciate that. This one's on you, right? <sighs> okay. So this one, babe, is real juicy. Okay. Um, this person wanted to stay anonymous, oh, okay. but they enjoyed the first or second episode so much that they wrote in to us mm. to tell us about a dilemma and what we thought about it. Okay. Um, hey, bed talk. My boyfriend, <laughs> oh my goodness, my boyfriend has a smaller penis than I'm used to, but he provides for me and my child that doesn't belong to him. He's not bad. At eating vagina, I'm not saying that word. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also not mind-blowing. We've been together for a year, and I'm considering breaking up because I'm not satisfied sexually. Mm. But he does everything else right. What should I do? Oh, man. I feel oh. like... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like sex is a major, major, major key. And when somebody isn't being pleased, that could be a big problem. Um, I feel like also it's really hard to find somebody who's checking off all the other boxes to all the other important boxes. You know what I'm saying? If you, and you got a kid, you know what I'm saying, that's not you know, his and he's able to, you know, help provide and doesn't look at it in like no type of way. I feel like, you know, that person might be a keeper. Now, granted, 
that package might not be what you're used to or what you you know what's ideal but mm-hmm. you also got to ask yourself you know I, I you remember it was this this video i seen by joyce myers and she was talking about how like you can keep going up to each level but like when you get to the certain level you can't basically go back mm-hmm. but it's like a game like let's say we play this game it's like okay cool you got this guy and he's like okay he's good he's okay looking and he might have a couple dollars and he's like do you want to pass to this person and go up to see what's better and then you keep going up and this person is you know what i mean he's he looks better he dresses better. He has more money. He has a bigger package. But, you know, it might be somebody better at the, at the next level. Do you want to keep going? They, the lady says, yeah, I want to keep going and see what's next. Long story short, she keeps trying to go and find this perfect guy. And then she gets to this point at a level where she goes through that door and then there's no more men left. So and you can't go back to that previous level. Mm-hmm. So basically, people miss out on their blessings because they keep trying to find better. But sometimes there is no better. Like you, you missed out on your on your on the best you was gonna get in this life. Mm-hmm. And um I say this to say maybe you might just gotta teach them how to eat your pussy right. <laughs> you might just gotta teach them to do the things that you like, or maybe, hey babe, let's introduce some toys to this. You know what I mean? Let's try some new kinky shit. Let's try you know, maybe I've seen something like this and I might want you to try this. Like, if you really fuck with me or you really want to be down with me, I would really appreciate this. It honest, just be honest with the person. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes mm-hmm. a guy can really take more than what women give us credit for. Now, granted, will it hurt a little bit? Yeah, it might. But at least we would rather know how to please you. Mm-hmm. Like, but then you leave me or cheat on me, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be. But um, I would definitely just sum it up and just say, try to talk to the person, give him some pointers, and show him how you like it to be done. See how that goes. Okay, okay. Um, on that, I'm going to say um, to have a stand-up guy is rare. Very rare. And sex is something that's taught. You learn things like you learn how to eat. You learn how to do these things. It's not something you just wake up and you do. You didn't had what well, guess a couple partners or you watch a few videos, got a couple pointers, whatever the case may be. It's something that's taught. So if he's doing everything else, all you have to do or all you can do, because you know I'm not telling you how to dictate your life, but you can literally just be like right there. Don't move. I like it when you do it like this. I like it when you. And then I feel like while you're in in the zone of sex or like having sex or, you know, he's um, eating you out or whatever, it verbally talk so the man can know if you're just sitting there. He don't know he's missing. He don't know. He think in his mind, I'm doing the damn thing. I'm doing whatever. Mm-hmm. Right, like right. That's why I feel like talking and sex is important because mm-hmm. that's how for one you learn each other you learn your partner whoever you're dealing with and that way he can learn you because if you're not saying anything well oh, here we go he's gonna try this again and i already know what it's gonna be like instead of guiding him like babe try this right here you know oh i like the when you or do like men do grab his head Put them where you want them, you know. <laughs> it's just a lot of things that you could do. Because, like I said, sex is taught. Like, you don't wake up and be like, I'm a porn star. Mm-hmm. No, it's something that's taught. So, it's not like he can't learn. And if he's, you know, not what you're used to, I don't know how far off that is, you know. <laughs> but teach him things like, I like it. We go really, really fast. Like Babe said, incorporate a toy. So, maybe while he's... Not satisfying you by whether it's length or girth, you got something else that's still giving you pleasure during the experience and you're still with your partner, which might unlock something in him that you didn't even know was there because you won't even take the time to do those things. So mm-hmm. definitely what I would say about that for sure. I just feel like sex is taught, you know. Indeed. Well, we hope that helps. Shout yeah. out to you for coming to us with that question. If you guys got <clears throat> more questions, more you know, even if you just want to drop a bombshell and just, you know, a confession. Like, Anything. you don't even got to be a question. Just, I got a confession. Try to send them in. Mm-hmm. I'm going to drop the email right here. This is the Bed Talk email. Shoot your confessions, your questions. And um, we'll definitely 
put them on a show and get to it. Yeah, like we're not dictating nobody's lives and not telling you what to do. It's just what we would do or our point of view. So don't ever feel like they're not finna sit up here and tell me. Listen, nope. we are not like these other <laughs> podcasts. You want that man to sit up here and love you? You think you want to do all this for your kid? You think sex just going to be? We're not, we're not here for that. You <laughs> are not enough. <laughs> Like, no, if anything, we're going to have fun. We're going to have our point of views. We're going to talk to y'all the same way we talk. If we was off camera, we'll probably get off of this and still be talking. Because that's just how we bond. That's what we do. That's our Indeed. Thing. So. And before you do anything else, hit that subscribe button. It helps us grow. It helps the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button. Yes. Drop a like and a comment, too. Right there. Well, it's about that time. 11.51. Whew. Y'all gonna let me go to bed now? <laughs> yeah, we can, we can get our time to cuddle time. Cuddle, 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 oh, cuddle, yeah. cuddle, cuddle, cuddle. So yeah, guys, thank you guys for sending those in and interacting with us. Mm-hmm. Fucks with y'all, we love y'all already and appreciate y'all. Yeah, my mom. Bow, bow, a bling, a bow. So yeah, so definitely keep them coming. Yes, whatever sir. you want to see, or you know what, what, whatever we hear, whatever you want to see, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a piss about nothing but the tag, baby. Road time. We play tomorrow, y'all. No, we play Saturday, baby. I knew that. Twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock before the baby shower. You were gonna be tuned in, so prepare yourself. Yes, sir. Baby. All right, how do we end this? We just gonna end it. Tune in, tap in, like, subscribe, comment, email. We hear, and that's bed talk. Episode three. Cha ching. Pow. 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 Pow.